And this is what a warm-up page can really look like. It's messy, there's not much going on. That's the important thing, it's okay to be messy. Welcome back everybody to another episode. Today for episode five, we're gonna be going over group one for the Sketchbook Club review. And in group one, we have four people. We have Bianca, Jenna, Carly, and Will. Let's jump into it. So first up, Bianca. Um, good sketch. I like the proportion that you've included in there. Um, I can tell roughly how big it is in my hand and both sketches that you have on the page look to be about the same size and they don't look too disproportionate from each other. Good on that. It is a simple product and I know the demo that we did with Catherine in class was of that specific type of mouse. You've managed to get a lot of good detailing on it. Simple detailing, but effective nonetheless. The one thing that I wanna say about the piece though that I think we can improve is that the page right now looks a little empty. You know, on a nine by 12 page, there's these two small objects and they kind of just look empty and just placed there. So maybe we can make them a bit bigger or, or add more views to the page. And let's work on adding more construction. You know, in the demo, there was a lot of construction, um, figuring out profiles and sectioning our views. So see how we can implement that into a sketch today. Same as every single other week is line weight. We're gonna to wanna to see darker line weight on the bottom where an object is sitting on the table and lighter line weight where it's on the top or where it may be catching a highlight. And Jenna, I'm gonna do your sketch at the same time because you and Bianca have both done basically the same type of mouse. Jenna, the sketch that you've done here is again, a good sketch and I actually like the varying line weight that you've included here. You've got the thick lines at the bottom and that is a good contrast between some lighter lines that you see up at the top. I can also see there's a bit of construction going on here, but for the most part, it looks like it's a bit freehand. I also like the good viewpoint selection that you've done. You've got a good front three quarter and an appropriate rear three quarter as well. Bianca and Jenna, I wanna see, I'm just looking at both your sketches here. I wanna see how we can challenge ourselves with these sketches themselves. You know, maybe we sketch a mouse that's a bit more difficult, something like this, which is a Logitech MX Master 2S. If you wanna look that up and try sketching that, something that's just atypical looking like a Microsoft Surface mouse, they look a little weird. Both of you, Bianca and Jenna, let's focus on doing clean lines. And, and a simple way to do that is just a, doing a simple warm up on the back of the page, you know, filling it up and making it messy. Nothing wrong with that at all. Let's just go over and do kind of a quick page of of mouse sketches to show how we can fill them up and at least set up the page. And so I'm gonna do a quick little thumbnail up at the top here. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna rough in a title block at the bottom. I have a front three quarter view here, maybe a side view in the middle, and then a rear three quarter on the side. So the main composition of my page goes down on an angle like that. To start, obviously set up your XYZ plane, or I'm gonna sketch the Microsoft Surface mouse, just cause it's kind of interesting. Make sure I'm following the vanishing points. And I'm gonna leave that first sketch and I'm gonna come back to it now. Now I'm gonna worry about the side view and this may or may not overlap. I'm gonna make sure that it does overlap here just a bit. And down at the bottom here, maybe in a different orientation, I will have my, what will end up being my rear three quarter view. And what this kind of technique does is just very simply breaks up the page into something that's just a bit easier to deal with rather than a large blank white. So I know the rough form, so I'm gonna do the side profile first material separation there, so I've got that. And now I can take this and also project the same type of geometry, my top view, or into my front three quarter view, and the same thing in my rear three quarter view. I'm basically gonna section this off, like what Catherine has been talking about. I'm gonna find the middle. Oh, it's my midpoint right there. So now I've split the mouse in half right along there. Very easy to do, you just find the center point and you bring everything back. And now, very loosely put in a curve at the front here, and that is now the front. And now I can basically just add my product thickness. Luckily this mouse isn't super complex, but it just looks pretty interesting. And obviously it's gonna have a little split right in the middle for the, uh, the left and the right buttons. So let's do, and I'm basically just gonna go ahead now and speed through the rest of this, and then we can add a bit of line weight. Silent sketching.
And now that that's done, we can add just a little bit of line weight just to really help make the sketch pop. And this is where we're gonna be able to clean up a lot of the lines that we've done. And really just trying to build up line weight through gradual repetition. I actually should have looked up what the Microsoft Surface Mouse looks like. I'm just going largely based off memory. I think the key takeaway for this one is simply setting up just a little page thumbnail to help out. Or Bianca and Jenna, both of your sketching abilities seems to be progressing very well. Um, however, it's adding the little details, just page composition, and really cleaning up those pages by adding line weight and considering your composition. Um, I think that's how you're gonna be able to take the sketches that you're doing now and take those to the next level. If you take one thing out of this, hopefully it's at least the idea of just really quickly, you know, thumbnailing our page out, that took probably 10 seconds max. You know, and this is just on a sketchbook. Taking a, it just, it doesn't just have to be two simple views. You can take it and really make it something interesting. Bianca and Jenna, thank you so much for the sketch that you have done. It's really good to see where you're at and how you're gonna be continuing to progress. On to the next one, we've got Carly. And Carly, you have sketched what looks like a hand raiser. Very cool. Um, Carly, I appreciate the clean lines that are in your sketch right here. I looked through some of the other you ones have you have. clean lines. You know, I can tell you probably have a pretty steady hand. Good to see. The sketch is also successful in communicating and conveying proportion. It doesn't look like something that is super oversized and super like, it doesn't look like it's the size of a car. It also doesn't look like it's super, super small and could fit in the palm of my hand. Good job with the details, you know, going around the circular blades there. That takes a lot of work. I appreciate the patience with that. And I also appreciate the fact that on the side of the product, you've done this double line, which can kind of imply a plastic part line. Good job. Okay, Carly, similar to Bianca um, and Jenna, there's minimal construction with the sketch. But the construction is important to developing a strong sense of portion, strong sense of accuracy, and overall just a strong sense of detailing. So that being said, I'd encourage you to try and project as many details as possible. Explore side views as well. Side views can be a really neat, nifty, and easy way for you to just kind of fill up the page in terms of a composition. It also helps you understand the product a bit more when you're looking at it directly in a side view. Okay, and then obviously last thing again, line weight. A lot of the lines that you have on here are their mono lines there. Let's get real heavy with some line weight. I'm going to try and replicate the uh, view that you have where the shaver is standing up. I'm going to break that down first into a vertical rectangular form. The pen is really loud on this paper. I like this paper a lot, but it's got a lot of tooth to it. It's very, very rough. That's the first basic form. Now what I'm also going to do is I know it has to taper out on an angle slightly, so I'm going to loosely project my item out on an angle. Now, since it has a curved bottom, I'm gonna to wanna to find my center point. So I can use do that center line technique Catherine talked about. Project across some reference lines. This just becomes a matter of connecting the dots, or connecting the curves per se. I'm gonna split this top face up into two square planes, find the center point of each. I can project semi-accurate ellipse. Does look a bit chunky. I may have made it a bit too thin. Yeah, it's it's very. See, my proportion is not not great. Good detailing with that little button thing that you sketched in here. Uh, it looks really good. Add this little part line at the bottom, or maybe it uh, maybe there's a rechargeable battery in here that kind of pops out. No, I'm gonna have it come up the side to show how a contour could wrap around the surface. I've got the loose construction done, and you can see that's a lot of construction for such a simple part. But now. This is where the detail really comes into play and where the detail and line weight is an important thing. And constructing all of that is what makes sketching the detail and sketching the different parts of the product, that's what makes that so much easier. It's very important to construct the sketch, that whatever it is that you're doing, no matter how simple. We're gonna break this down. We're gonna really um, add a bunch of detail to it and maybe we'll add a cord coming off the bottom there. Okay, so let's uh, let's dive into this with the Bic pen and let's smash some line weight on this. Heavy line weight on the bottom right around here. I'm gonna fade it up as I go. Really loosely rough in the ellipses up at the top here. I'm not going to worry too much about the detail in that because you've got a very good sense of that already. The head of the shaver can tilt up and down. Okay. 
It's kind of at the point now where there's almost too much construction and it's starting to get really messy. That could also be this thick toothy paper that I'm using. I don't really know. Um, but the key here to take away is that construction is super important and super crucial to the success of your overall sketch. The more that you construct, the less you have to guess. And the less you have to guess, the more in your sketch is going to end up being accurate. So, Carly, thank you so much for the sketch that you've done. I've had a look through the other ones that you had there and they look really, really good. Keep it up. You know, obviously don't stop. Continue to always challenge yourself and improve. And we're on to the last one, Will. Well, I picked this sketch for several reasons. One, I think it's a very good example of how to include hands on a page and create a positive composition out of it. I think you've done a really good job. Maybe adding a grounding box would help just keep everything frame all of the pieces that you've done. Also, you've sketched a little happy birthday cake next to your name on November 24th. So I'm assuming based on what you've written, it's your 27th birthday. Happy belated birthday if that is the case. The sketches that you've done are also very good at showing proportion. I appreciate the detail in the blades of the shaver as well as the part lines on the product and the varying viewpoints you've got hands holding something like this over like that and also cylindrical going lengthwise so good job. I can see that you've done some construction here. It seems that most of the construction you've done in the sketch has gone towards the hand which isn't a bad thing but again are we designing hands or are we designing products? That being said the only thing is maybe I would lighten up the line weight on the hand sketches just a little bit it, just so that it's not grabbing so much of my attention when I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the product first and then I see the hand after it. And obviously try and project as many details as possible because like I was saying before to Carly, projecting those details is going to help those details be accurate when you're sketching. And there's just a few little perspective issues that have happened because of a lack of construction. But other than that, well, you're doing a really good job. So maybe it's simply a case of exploring um, and adding different side views and whatnot to the overall sketch that we've done. So if we flip back to sketch that we did for Bianca and Carly, maybe this is where we can add a bit of storytelling into the sketch that we're doing. And see one of the sketches here, you have a mouse and you have the hand over top of the mouse, but the way that you've done it is kind of like this. So you almost can't even see the mouse. You see a lot of the hand, you see a lot of the back of the hand. That doesn't really do me any good if I'm trying to see what the mouse looks like. How I would approach this is let's do a little sketch right in here. Maybe this is like a storyteller, very loose form. And I'm gonna really loosely project this. Now what happens if I want to add a hand to this and I wanna show that it's clicking a button? Maybe I'm gonna look at my hand as if I was coming in to click a button, finger up here. I know that Microsoft Surface Mouse is not very big. I'm gonna add a bit of detail to this really loose hand sketch that I've done here. And again, like I've said before, hands, humans, body parts are not my sketching strong suit, so bear with me. Always make sure we have five fingers on our hands. Now let's add an arrow for the sake of this. Let's say on our perspective, and this is where it's kind of going to bleed out of the grounding box that we've done a little bit, which is okay. I'm going to do my best and turn this into a good composition example. Okay. You know, it is small, it is loose. I probably could have made this a bit bigger. Uh, but now from here, I can add an annotation. You know, I can write something simple and ergonomic. Click feature. Ultimately, that doesn't really mean much because 99% of mice that exist today are very easy to use. But just add in my arrow there. But I hope that that can act as maybe a bit of an example. Show how you can just add, simply add a bit more to the overall composition that you have. This right here, this sketch is a great way. Maybe it's a better view to show without a hand. Because if we were to put a hand on top of it, it would cover everything up. And that's not what we want to do. So let's add a bit of line right on the back here. Okay, now maybe if we want to connect these two sketches together, we have a very loose one where it's an in situ. But now to add to the storytelling aspect of our page where we're communicating the different features of this mouse, maybe we can also add a second arrow into here just to show that maybe that's where we're trying to focus and have our viewer look. Maybe we can just add a few more annotations as well. Maybe we can add a small annotation down here that says comfortable grip for large hands. I don't know. I think I'm going to do my little annotation trick here and just do a bit of a kind of frame the annotation just a little bit. It's a nice subtle detail adds to the overall quality of the page. Well, 
I don't know you, but I can tell that you have a good understanding of this whole industrial design sketching thing. A couple things though. Focus strongly on constructing the product as much as you're constructing the hands in your sketch. The quality that you're producing right now, that's a really good thing. But don't settle on that and see how you can take it to another level, you know? And the way that you take it to another level is by adding these details, you know, in a sketchbook. Put in the time to add annotations, title blocks, thumbnail your pages out. Just like I've said for everybody in this video, it's all about taking what you're currently doing and pushing it up another notch. And this is a simple but very effective way to do that. Will, thank you so much for the sketch. It looks really, really, really good. You should be very proud of yourself. Also, happy belated birthday. 27 G's, man, you're old. You're older than me by like five years. And that basically wraps us up for another episode of the Sketchbook Club. And it's very nice to see where everybody is at at the current stage in their industrial design sketching. You guys are almost done your first semester, which is that's kind of that's kind of crazy just even to think about. Build this practice, build this habit, you know, keep sketching and don't be afraid to make messy stuff and don't be afraid to make mistakes. And I will see you next week for episode six of the Sketchbook Club. Peace. Process Podcast.